Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. This is not a repair video, it's more of a test, an experiment. What I want to know is this right stuff, 90 minute gasket maker. This is what I use a lot. And let me grab it. This other stuff, just regular ultra black. Another great RTV. On the back, it gives you directions, a cure time, how much to put on, finger tighten for a little bit, wait a certain amount of time, then torque it, then wait a little more time before adding fluid and putting it back to service. Of course, the 90 minute gasket maker, the 90 minute gasket maker is a lot quicker according to the directions. Well, we're gonna put these to the ultimate test. It is freezing outside, actually below freezing in the 20s. I'm gonna be pulling off the transmission pan and the oil pan. The oil pan will get the regular RTV. The transmission pan will get the 90 minute RTV. I'm not gonna wait for cure times. I'm gonna bead, slap, torque, and fill and put this beast back on the road. This is the work van so we can experiment all we want with it. And we're gonna find out, will these gaskets still hold if we don't wait for those cure times? So follow along, uh, let's find out. Just so everybody can see, it is January 25th and it is currently 28 degrees outside. So that is plenty cold enough. All right, that looks showroom clean. Just give it one more wipe. Nice. <laughs> All right, we'll set this aside for now. All right, so now we can wipe this surface off here. You can just put a little brake clean on a rag. Typically, I don't like to use these blue rags these paper towel type rags, because they have the tendency to rip and that can leave debris and stuff behind inside your transmission. So if you are using these, then just keep that in mind and keep an eye out for any uh, little pieces of this that get snagged on something. But as I say that, I'm gonna be using this blue one because I don't have any other rags. Now on the transmission pan, I'm gonna be using the 90 minute, the right stuff. 90 minute gasket maker, I'm gonna bead, just put it up there, torque it down and fill it up. So no wait times. All right, there's my bead, just went along, circled around all the bolt holes and uh, that should be good. Slap this bad boy on. I just wanna wipe off this one spot one more time. So my RTV will stick. Now, if you're not using RTV, you don't have to worry about it as much. But I want the RTV to get a good seal. Just like filling up any transmission it takes forever. All right, that's all of it. So let's pop off the oil pan. That's not what you want to see in the bottom of your oil pan. Not quite sure what that's from. A little piece of metal. There's some more. 
under there. It's like a connecting rod bearing metal or not quite sure. A little disheartening. Oh well. So what we're going to do is just clean this off really well just like we did the transmission pan. That way we can identify uh, any leaks if there are any. Just wiping out the inside really so I can flip it over. But also get any of that metal out. I'm not quite sure where that would have came from. The engine's not making any crazy noises, so not sure. If it wasn't freezing out, it would have been nice to pressure wash this thing. That would have really made it nice looking. All right, it's probably as good as it's gonna get. Let's clean off our gasket surface really well. All right, so under here, we're just gonna get this surface good and clean. All right, we'll wipe it one more time. A little brake clean. Put our bead on. All right, let me just double check, make sure it's a good bead all around. Just to say again, this is the regular Ultra Black. Not the 90 minute, but the normal one you get. This is supposed to be a cure time of 24 hours. So let's slap it on, torque it down, fill it up. Just for the record, for the experiment, if you look above the oil pan, you can see I have a leak up there already. And you can see that it's dripping down the side right here. So when we go to check to see if we have any leaks, we just need to remember that there's a leak up above that may come down and get on our oil pan on this backside. All right, let's get this little guy filled up. Five quarts. All right, got everything buttoned up, filled up. I'm gonna take it for a quick test drive, warm it up, make sure I got enough transmission fluid back in. And that's it, that is the experiment. I may go under, just do a quick preliminary inspection to see if there's any drips or anything. Uh, but this is my daily work vehicle. We'll be driving around a lot for the next month. And then we'll go and look at it one more time to see if it was successful or uh, if this was a fail. So stay tuned, for me it'll be a month, for you it'll be a flash. All right, we are back, it is March 2nd, so over a month since we uh, did this test or started this test. So place your bets now, we're gonna go underneath, take a look, is this sealed or are we leaking? Let's find out. All right, starting with the transmission pan. This is the front, towards the front of the vehicle. And we have no uh, drips, that's just dirt, but no fluid accumulation. And then go to the side here, looks the same. No accumulation. Come to the back. Now it looks a little moist around here, but it's also moist up above. So I think this moisture is just a collection of uh, this moisture from up above, but no uh, drips or any drops accumulating on the pan. And then one last side, this side, the same. So I would say this transmission pan is sealed. So now the oil pan, this is a little harder because uh, I have a pretty monstrous um, 
power steering pump leak that just started not too long ago that I need to address. But also though, if you look, uh, it looks, I mean, there's nothing on the pan, the bottom of the pan, there's no drips. Some of this, you know, maybe from not wiping it down very good, but there's no drips accumulating down the whole pan on this side as well no drips nice and good there's a drop here uh, but i think that's power steering fluid so oil pan is sealed all right there you have it both oil pan and transmission pan are still sealed after a month later of not following the directions just beating slapping torquing and filling now of course i don't recommend doing this i always recommend following the directions on the back of that rtv tube uh, but this just shows or proves to me the power or how great rtv is for a gasket maker Sometimes when there's just paper gaskets for like a water pump or thermostat housing or something like that, I'll just throw away the paper gasket. Paper gaskets for me sometimes uh, just don't do the job. They fail prematurely and they're really hard to scrape off sometimes. Replace it with RTV, follow the directions and you'll have a gasket that'll last for a very, very long time. And when it comes to uh, replacing that pump again or that thermostat housing or whatever scraping off that silicone uh, is a lot easier and even if you don't get a hundred percent of that silicone off that's okay just slap a new bead on and and do your thing so uh i like the results let me know what you think post down below i use permatex what rtv do you prefer and have you run into any issues using it thanks for watching like subscribe see you on the next one